NASA raised concerns on Starship's propellant transfer. Europe about to rent Falcon 9. SpaceX released Orbital Flight 3 Timeline. Yes, it's very closer than you think. Orbital Flight Timeline for Starship Super Heavy. That is IFT-3. As you may recall, Starship has already performed two high-altitude test flights in 2023, both of which ended with spectacular explosions. Introducing Starship, the next-generation rocket that is set to revolutionize space travel. This mammoth vehicle is designed to carry massive payloads and even house hundreds of people en route to the Moon and Mars. Get a glimpse into the future of space exploration as we delve into the incredible technology behind Starship astounding engineering feats and mind-boggling fuel consumption, as this behemoth is powered by liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Join us on this exhilarating journey to discover the immense capabilities of Starship. Jump on board the Artemis program and set your sights on the stars. Today, we've got an exciting update on SpaceX's Starship propellant transfer demo from both NASA and SpaceX. But before we begin make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos let's delve into this episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. NASA is a bit worried about how complex it is. In this video, we'll talk about those concerns. As you may already know, Starship is SpaceX's next-generation rocket and spacecraft, designed to carry massive payloads and hundreds of people to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Starship is a fully reusable system, meaning that both the rocket and the spacecraft can land back on Earth and be used again for future missions. This is a game-changer for reducing the cost and increasing the frequency of space travel, but Starship is not just a rocket. It's also a key part of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon. SpaceX has won a $4.2 billion contract from NASA to develop a human landing system version of Starship, which will ferry astronauts from lunar orbit to the surface and back. But SpaceX is not giving up on its ambitious vision, and the company is now preparing for the third test flight of Starship which could happen as soon as next month. This was revealed by SpaceX Vice President of Customer Operations and Integration Jessica Jensen during a media teleconference on Tuesday, January 9, that was held to discuss updates to NASA's Artemis program. The Artemis program is NASA's plan to return humans to the lunar surface for the first time since 1972 and eventually establish a sustainable presence there. Jensen said that SpaceX is targeting to be ready for Starship's third flight in January and is waiting for the FAA license to come in February. She also said that SpaceX is finishing up making corrective actions requested after Starship's second flight test, which was caused by a propellant vending issue, according to Elon Musk. So, what can we expect from Starship's third flight? Well, Jensen did not give much details, but she did say that it will not be the mission that does the on-orbit ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer which is a key capability that Starship will need for its future missions to the Moon and Mars. You see, Starship is a very large and powerful vehicle, capable of carrying up to 150 tons of payload to low Earth orbit, and up to 100 tons to the Moon or Mars. But to do that, it needs a lot of fuel, which it burns through very quickly while escaping Earth's gravity. That's why Starship will need to be refueled in orbit by other Starships, acting as tankers before continuing on to its destination. This is a very complex and challenging operation, involving docking, transferring and storing cryogenic liquids in microgravity. And it's something that has never been done before at this scale. So, how many refueling flights will Starship need to go to the Moon or Mars? That was one of the questions that was asked during the teleconference, and NASA Administrator Bill Nelson made sure that Jensen gave a specific answer. Jensen said that it will require roughly 10-ish flights to fuel up the Starship, that will be used for the Artemis 3 mission, which is the mission that will land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon. However, she also said that this number could change based on how the tests of the propellant transfer capability pan out. She pointed out that SpaceX has already achieved almost all of the complex parts of this operation on its operational programs, such as the Falcon 9 and the Dragon, and it's just a matter of piecing them together for Starship. NASA's Amit Keshatriya, Deputy Associate Administrator for the agency's Moon to Mars program, added that one reason why there are different estimates of the number of refueling flights is that NASA and SpaceX have multiple models and analyses to try and predict what refueling Starship will entail. But he also said that the real test will be when they actually try and do this in orbit. 
he praised SpaceX for being extremely transparent with NASA and for sharing a lot of data with them about their own challenges in terms of cryogenic refueling. Keshitriya also said that, in addition to propellant transfer tests, NASA wants to conduct an uncrewed landing test on the moon with Starship before sending humans there. This is to ensure that Starship can safely and accurately land on the lunar surface and avoid any potential hazards such as craters, boulders, or dust. This is a huge honor and responsibility for SpaceX and also a huge challenge. Why is it a challenge? Well, because Starship is a very big and powerful vehicle and it needs a lot of fuel to get to the moon. Starship runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which are stored in cryogenic tanks at very low temperatures. To launch from Earth, Starship needs a giant booster called Super Heavy, which has 33 Raptor engines and can lift more than 10 million pounds of thrust. But even with this enormous booster, Starship can't carry enough fuel to reach the moon and come back. It needs to top off its tank in orbit. This is where the concept of orbital refueling comes in. Orbital refueling is the process of transferring propellant from one spacecraft to another in space. This is something that has never been done before with cryogenic liquids and it's very tricky to do in microgravity. But SpaceX has a plan to make it work. The plan is to launch several tanker versions of Starship into low Earth orbit, each carrying about 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen. These tankers will act as a fuel depot in space, waiting for a passenger version of Starship to dock with them. The passenger Starship will then transfer the liquid oxygen from the tankers to its own tanks, filling up enough to complete the rest of the journey to the moon. This will require multiple docking and transfer operations, depending on how much fuel is needed. SpaceX plans to conduct a preliminary test of this technique in February, when it will launch its third Starship prototype to orbit. An attempt to transfer 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between its own tanks. This will be a crucial step to demonstrate the feasibility and safety of orbital refueling, and also a milestone for Starship's development. But why is orbital refueling so important for space exploration? Well, because it could enable much longer and farther missions than ever before. Imagine if we could use the resources of the moon, such as water ice, to make propellant on the lunar surface. Then we could launch Starship from the moon with much less fuel. And refuel it in orbit, using tankers from Earth or the Moon. This way, we could send Starship to Mars, the asteroids, or even beyond the solar system, with much more payload and crew capacity. Orbital refueling could also make a long-term presence on the Moon possible, by allowing Starship to deliver more supplies and equipment to the lunar base. NASA and other commercial partners are very interested in this idea and they have invested millions of dollars in developing the technology and infrastructure needed for orbital refueling. NASA's Artemis program, which seeks to use the Moon as a springboard from Mars and beyond, relies heavily on this concept. SpaceX is not the only company working on it. Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' rival space company, is also developing a lunar lander that will use orbital refueling, and it has won a contract from NASA for a crewed mission to the Moon in 2029. But SpaceX has a clear advantage over its competitors, thanks to its experience and track record with reusable rockets and spacecraft. SpaceX has already proven that it can launch and land its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, and reuse them for multiple missions. It has also proven that it can dock its Dragon spacecraft with the International Space Station, and deliver cargo and crew to the orbiting laboratory. SpaceX has learned a lot from these achievements, and it is applying that knowledge to Starship and orbital refueling. SpaceX's Vice President of Customer Operations and Integration, Jessica Jensen, said that orbital refueling is not as complex and scary as it sounds, and that SpaceX has already achieved almost all of the complex parts on its operational programs. She said that SpaceX will leverage everything it has learned. From the sensors, the algorithms and the procedures, to make two starships dock and transfer propellant in orbit. But NASA is not so confident. NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Moon to Mars, Amit Kashatriya, said that orbital refueling is extremely challenging, and that it poses a significant coordination challenge for the dual launch campaign of Orion and Starship. He also said that NASA is closely monitoring SpaceX's progress and performance with Starship, especially after the two previous test flights ended in explosions. NASA has recently announced that the first crewed Artemis mission to the Moon, which was originally planned for 2024, will be delayed to 2026, due to various technical and budgetary issues.
As you may know, Starship was selected by NASA as its crewed lander for the Artemis III mission, which is scheduled for September 2026. This mission will send two astronauts to the moon, where they will spend about a week exploring and conducting science experiments. Starship will also carry a suite of payloads, including a rover, a habitat module, and a solar power system. But before that, NASA is planning to launch the Artemis II mission, which will be the first crewed mission to orbit the moon since Apollo 17. This mission is currently aiming for September 2025 and will include four astronauts, three from NASA and one from the Canadian Space Agency. The NASA astronauts will be Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, and Christina Koch, who will make history as the first person of color and the first woman to leave low Earth orbit. The Canadian astronaut will be Jeremy Hansen, who will become the first non-American to leave low Earth orbit. The Artemis II mission will use the Orion spacecraft, which is a capsule designed for deep space exploration and the Space Launch System, which is the most powerful rocket ever built. These two elements are also derived from the now-canceled Constellation program, which was NASA's previous plan to return to the Moon. The Orion and the SLS will also be used to launch the Lunar Gateway, which is a small space station that will orbit the Moon and serve as a staging point for lunar missions. The Gateway will be built in collaboration with international partners, such as the European Space Agency, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and others. The Gateway will also host scientific experiments and provide communications and navigation services for lunar exploration. So, as you can see, there are a lot of exciting things happening in the Artemis program, and Starship is a big part of it. Starship is not only a rocket, but also a spacecraft, a lander, and a base. It is a versatile and ambitious vehicle that could revolutionize space exploration and enable humanity to become a multi-planetary species. But of course, there are also a lot of challenges and risks involved in this endeavor, and nothing is guaranteed. Starship still has a long way to go before it can prove itself as a reliable and safe system for human spaceflight. And NASA still has a lot of work to do to ensure that the Artemis program meets its goals and deadlines, and stays within its budget. This means that SpaceX has more time to perfect its Starship and orbital refueling capabilities, but also more pressure to deliver on its promises. So what do you think? Will SpaceX succeed in refueling Starship in orbit and make history with its lunar landing? Or will it face more setbacks and challenges and lose its edge over its competitors? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more space news. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel, and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time